Hello everyone, I was going to say good morning because it is very early for me, but either way, welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworld for the channel, and today we have the Far Striders going up against the Spooky Ghosts, although not the Horse Ghosts, the Headsman's Curse, and again, we're trying to keep these briefer, so we're just going to jump in and look at both sides real quick just to remind you how they work and get on with it. So here are the three making up the Forest Riders being led by Sanson Forest Rider himself, which is the gentleman with the bird there, and he is joined by Ulmeric Eagle Eye and then Elias Swift Blade right over there. Just three of them. They don't traditionally do super well because if you start losing anyone it just gets real rough. Their inspired condition is the two different named attacks in the same round. And a favourite warband of mine, the Headsman's Curse, being led by the Wielder of the Blade, joined by the Bearer of the Block, the Scripter of the Sentence, he knows you're going to die, and the Sharpener of the Blade, who always takes first action and always does the same thing, because that's just how this group roll. Their Inspire condition is collect three or more Condemned Tokens. You can give those out with the script of the sentence, you can give those out for getting various kills that are supported, or if your target was a large fighter, but that doesn't apply here because none of the Far Striders are. We'll get both sides deployed, and in the meantime, while we're doing that, enjoy this brief word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store, and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And just like that, we are back with everything set up. It will be the Headsman's Curse going first, uh, but we'll go over where everyone is. Sanson is up here, then we have Swift Blade and Eagle Eye down here for the Forest Riders. The Sharpener of the Blade next to the Wielder of the Blade, because of course they are, and then the Bearer of the Block in the Scripture of the Sins right there. So with that, let's jump into round one of three and see how both sides do. Oh, and it would help if we flipped over objectives, of course. How could I forget? Objectives one and four are inside the Far Striders Quadrant. I, I probably forgot because neither of these sides particularly care. They like, I think Far Striders like objectives, but not specifically like what value they are. But anyway, they have one and four, so then we have three, five, and two over here. So of course it was the usual turn one play, or activation one play for the Hesman's Curse. It was the Sharpener of the Blade, who sharpened the Wooder of the Blade's Extremis, Exterminatus, whatever the sword is called, I keep forgetting. So it's going to do plus one damage. And it isn't until you have a success, which I keep forgetting, that has been done wrong in the past. He keeps that buff until such times he lands ahead. Now sometimes he just misses every single time, so it doesn't matter. That's often how it goes, but hey, we'll try and remember it today. Nothing played by the Headsman's Curse for the power phase. However, the First Riders are playing Lightning Blow, which is a plus one damage buff to the first attack action made by a friendly fire in the activation that we're about to go into. Omer Eagle Eye was first up for the Forest Riders doing a charge action, although he only moved two hexes, he can move three or four in total, three. Uh, Forest Rider himself can move four. And then attacked at range with his charged pistol, range three, three dice looking for swords. He got one sword, he was shooting it into the bearer of the block who was looking for dodges and got it, so no damage there at all. In the power phase, Forest Rider's playing nothing, so that does also mean Lightning Blow sadly went to waste. But Helping Hands is being put into play by the Headsman's Curse, it will apply to the next activation. In the first attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation, the attacker is considered to be supported by one additional friendly fighter. Many hands make deadly work. Ain't that the truth? Second action for the Headsman's Curse was the Scripter of the Sentence who did a charge. Started up there, they moved four and he did so. Got point blank with Omer Eagle Eye despite having range three on shouting accusations. Two dice looking for hammers for a single point of damage. Uh, unfortunately, the crit rolled by Eagle Eye there means nothing got through. The single support was a success here, thanks to Helping Hands. But, doesn't matter, because whether it does damage or not, it still gives out a Condemned token. So, Omeric has one Condemned token on him now. Oh, one other thing did happen there, just in case it was played after the activation. In the power phase, choose one friendly fighter, push the chosen fighter one hex towards the nearest enemy fighter with one or more wounds or Condemned counters. And the bearer of the block is going whoop and is right there, one closer to Elmeric. Elias Swift Blade was the second activation for the Far Striders, doing a charge action, moving forward to where they started there, to right there, and struck at point blank range into the bearer of the block, hoping to push him back. But unfortunately, three dice looking for swords didn't get a single success, so no defense roll even required, and no cards played by either side in the power phase, so a bit of a whiff of an activation all round. 
Well, it had to be coming, which is why Sanson didn't activate, because the threat radius of the Wielder of the Blade is four hexes. The Wielder of the Blade activated, did a charge action, went round the scenery in Objective 5 there, got into point-blank range with Elias Swift Blade, two dice looking for hammers, and he got a crit and a hammer. This is not usually how his first activation goes, and it just stomped through his defence. Base damage is three, but thanks to the Sharpener, it's doing four, so that is a one-shot. That is that is just a third of their strength gone in the second last activation of turn one. So that's one glory gained for the kill itself, but they're actually scoring an additional two glory for Eager Assistant. Score was immediately after the second or subsequent successful supported attack action, and keep in mind the just in case it was or the other power card made a previous attack count as being uh, supported. So that is two in the same phase. So that does score for two. One Condemned Token gained as well for killing a target who you were assisted against because these two were supporting the builder, no, they needed it. So yeah, that's pretty rough. Sanson moved in with a charge action, I believe I mentioned earlier, he is movement four as opposed to movement three of the other two, so that got him behind the Wielder of the Blade. He struck at the Wielder of the Blade, two dice looking for hammers, and he whiffed it. That could be game changing right there, he was looking to do some damage, force the Wielder back to get him out of position, maybe take him out next turn, and it's not going to happen. That's really, really bad. Last activation round one for the Headsman's Curse was the Bearer of the Block did a charge action, an entire, what, one hex? I think he moved one hex. Struck into Eagle Eye, rolling two dice looking for hammers, both of our successes because he is supported by the scriptor of the sentence. He did successfully block, but because it wasn't a crit, it only counted as one of the successes, so the hit got through for half his health, two damage and once again neither side playing anything in the power phase. Final activation for the round for Far Striders was the man himself Sanson Far Strider doing just an attack action because he and Omeric Eagle Eye have charge tokens and he used his Bolstorm pistol to attack at range three into the sharpener of the blade. Three dice looking for swords I'm not sure if the full results can be seen there but he did get swords and also crit which were not blocked so that is one whole damage to the Sharpener of the Blade, although he only has two health. But more importantly, that means Sanson has done two attacks in the same round, so he is now inspired, which improves his defense roll, so hey, it might mean he has a better chance of living, and it means his basic close combat attack is three dice looking for hammers now, which is pretty good. Let's go to the end phase and see if anything is scoring. So then around one, both sides are scoring in the end phase. Let's just start with the people currently in the lead. So the Hitsman's Cursor scoring, savouring the inevitable, taking them from three earned in the entire round to four. Scores in the end phase if a friendly fighter is adjacent to one or more enemy fighters and one or more of those enemy fighters have one or more wounds or condemned counters. Both are true of Omric Eagle Eye down here. So as I say, that takes them to four. Uh, technically, a slight, um, second last activation of the round Something should have scored for Far Strider. It should have been Storm, yeah, Storm Forward Vanguard. Score was immediately after an activation step if each surviving friendly fighter has one or more move or charge tokens. They had that after their third action. So this should have scored a bit earlier. We've taken that into account and they did draw another card. And that means it scores for one. They are also scoring Lightning Advance for one. It'll come into focus any second now. There we go. Scorpus in the end phase if there are two or more surviving friendly fighters and each of them are in enemy territory. Both are true, so that's two. And they're scoring one more for prime objective. Scorpus in the end phase if a friendly fighter is holding the highest valued objective in enemy territory. The highest value objective in enemy territory is five, and that's the one Sans and Farstrider are standing on. So they did manage to get three there in the end phase, which is pretty decent. That means we're going into round two with, yes, the Farstriders are man down, but they got three and the Hesman's Curse are ahead by a single glory, so not too bad. The Far Striders won priority at the start of round two and activated Sans and Far Strider who did a charge action, going to secure the kill on the Sharpener of the Blade over here. Now on his Inspired side rolling three dice, looking for hammers, he got two. The Sharpener does roll two dice, looking for dodges, got nothing, so that removes him from the game for one glory, making it even Stevens on four aside. And then in the power phase, both sides went kind of spend crazy on the unspent glory now that they've refreshed their hand of cards. Uh, so let's just uh, go over the Far Striders first. Far Strider himself is getting pimped out. He's getting given the Crackling Blade, which is his range one attacks have Grievous, which is one extra damage on crits, 
and Stagger. He is also being given Farsighted, ironically, so it's plus one to his range, three plus attack action, so he's got range four on those now. And he's being given Etheric Step, which just means he has flying, so he can go through uh, enemies and such, just in case he needs to get out. So it's just to make him a bit more survival, I take it, but over this side, the Hesman's Curse are also getting upgrades. Heavy Duty is being given to the Bearer of the Block. It's plus one damage to his ranged attacks, and it can be given to any Chain Rasp. Anyone except the Wield of the Blade has that keyword. Speaking of the Wield of the Blade, he is being given two upgrades, Job Satisfaction and Guided Blows. Job Satisfaction means if he's done an attack action, he goes on guard. Guided Blows means he gets a reroll, which is pretty good, because he hits like a truck, but he only really ever gets those two dice, so he needs it. First activation for the Hesman's Curse of Round 2 was the Wielder of the Blade, who did a movement action to where you can see him because he didn't want to kill Eagle Eye yet. He wanted to be there so that when he ended his activation, Gather a Crowd scored for one glory. Scorbus, uh, sorry, it's a surge, but you know what I mean. Scorbus immediately after an activation step if three or more friendly fighters are within two hexes of the same enemy fighter. Three of them are within the one hex of poor Eagle Eye there. He does not have flying, so despite the camera not focusing on him, he is just kind of stuck there now. And Eagle Eye had to try and do something before his inevitable death follows him in the next activation. So he activated and swung out at the bear of the block just to try and do some damage. Two dice looking for hammers, got one success, but that double support is a success for him. So cancels it out, no damage. The final unspent glory the Farstrider's had was spent to give Farstrider another upgrade since it's looking like he's going to be sole survivor. Hail of Bolts. His range 3 plus attack actions now also have Ensnare. And that is all she wrote for Elmeric Eagle Eye. The Bear of the Block activated, swung. The double success once again being the only thing that got through. But he was looking for shields. Didn't get it. Splat. That would that would have been 3 damage and he had 2 health left anyway. So Far Strider is indeed last man standing which is not good. Third action of round two for Far Strider, just gonna say that now because he's the last one there, was just a cycle and objective card. Draw one, discard one. So they're just a chance to try and get more scoring opportunities. Oh, and before I forget, did forget to mention, upon Omric Eagle Eye dying, that was another condemned token. Oh, actually, he had one on him. So it was one for the supported kill, and he had one on him. So now all the survivors of the Hedman's Curse are inspired. Oh no. Second last activation for the second round for the Hitsman's Curse was the Scriptor of the Sentence looking to throw out some more uh, condemnations or whatever it's called and moved up here with the charge action, attacks at range 3. On his inspired side he's rolling 2 looking for hammers which, well, he got a crit. Although Sanson did get one successful block, it doesn't matter, the crit gets through. It's only a single point of damage, yes it gives him a condemned token, not that that really matters now that they're inspired, but Hey, it's the first point of damage on his 4 health. With that charge token, it really meant Sanson had one thing he could do. He just did a, an attack. Using his ranged attack, his bolts and talons, range 5 because it's base 4 on his inspired side. So thanks to his upgrades, range 5. Just did it into the script of a sentence. Still 3 dice, still looking for swords, which he got one of, but that crit successfully got rid of any damage. He actually would have scored a card if that hit had been successful. Wouldn't have got a kill, but would have scored a card. So that is continuing <laughs> to be rough. Oh, and sorry, Unseemly Haste was played in the power phase by the Hetman's Curse. Nothing played for First Strider. Plus two to friendly fighters in the next activation. You cannot re-roll attack dice in the friendly fighters attack roll in the next activation. It was the bear of the block that tried to take advantage of that card. With the extra movement, he could get right up into Sanson's grill. Two dice looking for hammers, he got one success, but Sanson this time was the one to roll a crit on defense. So he is hanging on there and didn't take any damage. And that takes us to the end phase for round two already. In the end phase for round two, both sides are scoring one point each. Judge lest ye be judged for the headsman's curse. Scorbus in the end phase, if each surviving friendly fighter has one or more move or charge tokens and or, which they, they all have charge tokens. So that's scored for one, bringing them to seven. Um, Sanson, fan of Far Strider, is scoring Flash of Light for one. Scorbus in the end phase, if one or more friendly fighters are each in an edge hex in enemy territory. He is, that's precisely where he is. So that means that takes them to five. So Sanson is trailing by two as we go into the third and final round. 
And to get round three started, Sensen First Rider won the first activation again for the second time in a row. His roll for priority had three crits in it. So he's trying, he's try harding. Let's see if it pays off. He did a charge back up onto objective two, just trying to stay away from the wielder of the blade, basically. Attacking at range into the scripter, three dice looking for swords. He got a crit, and the scripter with his defense roll, so that's one damage through. That technically immediately scores a veteran marksman, so we'll just cover that right now. Score was immediately after friendly fighters, three plus range attack action resulted in a crit, which it did. So that is their sixth, yeah, sixth glory gained. But he's not done yet because rapid volley is being played. It's a reaction. Play this after friendly fighters range three plus attack action. He makes another one. It must target the same fighter. So we're going to roll for that now. And with that roll completed, all he got was swords on that one, which was blocked by a crit defense roll from the scripter. He did still take one more damage though, now of spite because of Raptor Strike. Choose an enemy fighter within four hexes of a friendly leader, deal one damage to them because his bird goes goes for the eyes, boo. So that's two damage of the three health the scripter has. The bear of the block was first activation for the headsman's curse because if he had landed this attack, it would have been basically game. Uh, obviously it does continue, but Farsider would have been off the table dead. So he did a charge action adjacent, rolled two dice, whiffed. Didn't get a single success, got a support and a double support, which do nothing. In the power phase, the Fire Strider is playing Fearsome Roar to immediately push the bearer of the block back one hex, just because he charged. Although, doesn't he have range two on his? No, he doesn't, he doesn't, yeah. So now he's out of his threat radius for getting bonked by the anvil. Fire Strider activated and tried to, well, obviously did, <laughs> and tried to finish what he started. Ranged three, four plus, five, five, yeah, that's five plus currently. Into the scripter, three dice, only the swords was a success. However, although this is normally a success for the scripter of a sentence, having ensnare on his ranged attacks as a result of Hail of Bolts means that that doesn't count as a success. So he is out of there for one glory, and an additional one glory is being spent, or rather um, earned, by scoring the Judgment of Sigmar. Scorbus immediately after a friendly fighter's range three plus attack action, it takes the target out of action. So not too bad, that means that Far Strider is up to 2, 4, 6, 8 now, so he's actually ahead by 1. The Wield of the Blade had to give chase, he was too far away. On his Inspired side he has 5 movement, but even that wasn't quite enough. He's 1 hex away from being able to engage, he's got range 1 on swinging his big sword. So Sansen is safe for this activation at the very least. He had to take a movement action to do it, because you can't force yourself to do a charge if you can't attack. So, yep, that is it, and no power cards played. I think both sides are pretty much tapped out of anything that's useful at this point. Second last activation of the game for the Far Striders, and he chose to stand his ground. He could have just tried to run away, move circles around the wielder of the blade, although with that movement five, even if he went into the top corner there, yeah, there'd actually be no escaping him, so he might as well stand his ground. He fired at range again into the wielder of the blade. Three dice, he got a crit. Whoops, I just moved it onto a uh, hammer, but it was a crit. Uh, no crits on the defense roll, so one whole damage of the wielder's five health. A bit lacking in options, but second last activation of the round for the headsman's curse was the wielder of the blade again, who did another movement action to get adjacent to Sanson. We'll see how confident he is. Couldn't do a charge action because he had that movement token already, just so you're aware. Obviously, a charge would have been the better option, but it was not available. And for Sanson's last activation of the game, he stood his ground as he said he would and just struck out with that shock hammer, or whatever it is of his, hand axe, I think. Three dice, looking for hammers, he got one hammer, and it actually did get through. It only does two damage, so it doesn't, if he'd got a crit, the crackling blade would have given him Grievous for an extra damage. It means the wielder has three damage on him in total, he can't die. But he did actually score Master of the Hunt off of the back of landing that hit. Scorbus immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action if that was the second or subsequent successful attack action made by them and both attacks had different names. Is the gist of that and he did his ranged attacks prior so it does score taking them to nine so they might actually win this just because even though the Hesman's Curse have been dominating the battlefield they haven't had as many scoring opportunities. I get the wielder's going to immediately just try and kill Sanson in a second here, so that'll get them one for sure. I don't know if it'll score anything else for them though. And astonishingly, oh, the damage for the wielder of the blade is still there, it doesn't really matter. 
he wasn't able to secure the kill. He got one success, and that's after his reroll from Guided Blows. But Sanson got one success on his defense roll. He's looking for blocks, and that means no damage through. So he gets the satisfaction of living till the end of the game. And I don't know if that's... Uh, it's going to be down to what scores in the end phase, basically, because the Hesman's Curse are behind as we go into it. So let's see. I did not see this coming with how fast they were decimated on the battlefield, but as we go into the end phase, Fast Riders have won. Simple as that, because in the end phase, the Headsman's Curse are scoring nothing, meaning that their score is as it was, which is 7. Could have been up to 8 if Far Strider had died there, which means if Far Strider had died, they would have ended on the 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. But because he survived, and because he happened to be sitting on an objective, um, after they scored uh, Master of the Hunt there, which was a surge, they drew without equal, which actually scores. Score of us in the end phase of two or more enemy fighters are out of action, two are, and your warband holds one or more objectives. He is sitting on objective two. So they actually scored 11 in the end to the Headsman's Curse 7. It is fair to say that Far Strider got real lucky there. <laughs> Definitely. Um, if he had died a bit sooner, it would have been closer. They still might have had it. It was just bad luck on the final hand for the hand, uh, Headsman's Curse. They had a lot of objective cards they couldn't use and they wanted to at least try and kill Sanson so they didn't give them time to cycle out what they ended up with in the third round. Bound in Servitude, if the uh, Bear of the Block had gotten the kill, would have been an extra score. So that would have been 1 plus 1 for the kill. Uh, they, but other than that, they had Tools of Death, which is a terrible card that you've got to try and score by having a bunch of upgrades. And as luck would have it, they had none of the upgrades in hand to apply. And then they had Quick to Judge, which there isn't enough in the enemy team to do that because there's literally not enough, not enough bodies left on the table to do Condemned Tokens to. So, yeah, they got kind of screwed by their own objective deck there because they were comfortably defeating the Forest Riders. But that's the way it goes sometimes in Underworlds. Forest Riders win. Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed trying to keep these as brief as people wanted. So I hope you appreciate that. Uh, if you do want to support the series, liking or commenting on the video helps. Subscribing for more obviously does too. If you can spare a little extra, becoming a channel member helps keep the lights on. You get access to certain video series early before anyone else. Or you can check out my channel sponsor if you do so via the affiliate link and pick yourself up something. I get a little bit of compensation as well. And as long as you're not in Europe or the UK... Um, and are in the US. You can buy Games Workshop stuff from them, including Underworlds as well. Thank you for watching either way, and I will see you next time. It's time for now.